topic today. It is about the relation between the zeros and the coefficient of the polynomial. So we have already discussed the types of the polynomial which based on the degree power of the polynomial. So let's on the base of that we will discuss. The first type of polynomial is linear polynomial. Linear polynomial. And the standard form of linear polynomial is yes, p of x is ax plus b. This is the standard form. Let's understand the question or the topic again and we will move further. It is the relation between whom zeros, we discuss what are the zeros. Zeros are the values of x which satisfy the equation. That means when we substitute those values into the equation, we will obtain 0. So zeros are the values of x. So we have to see the relation between zeros and the coefficient of the polynomial. Let's recall what are the coefficients. We discussed the coefficients are the values or the constant term which are in the product with the variable. I repeat, coefficients are the constant term which are in the product with the variable. So here we can say A is the coefficient of X, B is also coefficient but as it is a constant but it is a coefficient of X less to Z. So we have to see the relation between the coefficient and the zeros of the polynomial. That means if I make X as a subject as we discussed here earlier also that will obtain the value minus B by A. So here this is the relation that means what is the zeros of the polynomial linear polynomial we are talking about B. B is a constant term to so minus constant term. And what is A? A is coefficient of x. Let us understand this by one example. Suppose any polynomial P of x is given. x plus 1. So let's first find out what are the values of A and B. And then we'll see that whether it uh, satisfies this relation or not. Let's find out the value of a and b. How? We can compare this with the standard form that is ax plus b. So we can say a is 1 which is the coefficient of x and b is 1. Now x minus b. It's minus 1 upon a. 1. What is minus 1 upon 1? Minus 1. When we substitute this value here, look at are we supposed to get 0? It's minus 1 plus 1. So you can see that we obtain 0. So we can say that this is the correct relation. So this could be the MCQ objective and it is very useful. Which is considered as the zeros between the uh, relation between the zeros of the coefficient of linear polynomial. Now let us see the same for the quadratic polynomial, the relation between the zeros and the coefficient of quadratic polynomial. We know that the standard form of quadratic polynomial P of x is ax square plus bx plus c. So let us understand this by one example. Here the example, let's take this. I have taken one quadratic p. It is 2x square plus 3x plus 1. If I want to find out the zeros of this polynomial, we discuss how to find it out. Yes, in the last year only we discuss by using the splitting method. So we know that factors are 2 and are 2. So it is 2x square plus 2x plus x plus 1. I'll take out common from first two. What I'm doing here? Uh, here I'm finding out the values of zeros, x. To explain you the relation between the zeros and the coefficient. x plus 1 plus 1 common x plus 1. So x plus 1 is common. So here you can say that this quadratic polynomial is basically made up of two linear polynomials. Now we know how to find out the zeros of the linear polynomial. Correct. So this values of x would be minus 1 and this values of x would be minus 1 by 2. 
Now let us, these are the values of zeros which we obtain as we have to discuss the relation between the zeros as well as the coefficients. So if I compare this equation with the standard form, I can consider the values of a, b and c. So what the value of a we obtain here? a is 2, b is 3 and c is 1. So now let us see that we can see that one kind any kind of relation we will obtain between the zeros and this. But we should remember here that how the values exist. If I do, if I want to find out the relation between zeros and the coefficient, this. If I am going to do the addition of this two, x plus x, if I consider this as alpha and this as beta. So if I do alpha plus beta minus 1 plus minus 1 by 2. And if I simplify this, I get minus 1 minus 2 LCM I have taken. So it is minus 3 by 2. So now you can see this both are the values. This is the value of B or we can say the additive inverse and this is the value of A. So we can say that the sum of zeros, sum of zeros of this quadratic polynomial is sum of zeros that means alpha plus beta alpha and beta are considered as two zeros is minus b upon a you can see the relation minus b minus 3 upon 2 here we obtain so what we obtain here this is the relation between the zeros here there are sum of the zeros that is alpha plus beta and the coefficient minus b is what minus coefficient of x and what is a it is the coefficient of x square. One more relation we have to obtain. That is the product of zeros. If I do here, as I have done the addition, let me go for the product. Alpha into beta. So minus 1 into minus 1 upon 2. So answer comes 1 by 2. Now again when we Compare this with the values of ABC, that is the coefficient. You can see that 1 is the value of C and 2 is the value of A. So we can say that alpha beta is nothing but it is C upon A. So this is the another relation, this is one relation. This is the another relation which is called product of zeros. Product of zeros as alpha into beta. That is C upon A. What is C? It's a constant term. And what is A? It is the coefficient of x squared. So remember friends, it is not compulsory to remember. This is the only concept I want to clear for you. So you have to remember this formula. Sum of the zeros alpha plus beta is minus b by a and alpha beta is c by a. This is the relation between the zeros and the coefficient of the polynomial. Let's see the last that is for the cubic polynomial. We know the standard form of the cubic polynomial is ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d. As we discussed earlier also, if it is a linear polynomial, it has only one zero. If it is a quadratic polynomial, it has maximum, zyada si zyada, it has two zeros. There are some quadratic polynomial which does not have any zeros, that we will discuss later. So, a linear polynomial has one zero, that is x. Quadratic polynomial has two zeros, that is two values of x, alpha and beta. The same way cubic polynomial has three zeros. So, let us give that three zeros as alpha, beta and alpha. That means we will obtain maximum three values, three zeros or three values of x which satisfy this quadratic cubic equation polynomial. So let's see that the relation again. The first that is the sum of zeros. Sum of zeros that is alpha plus beta plus gamma. So we should remember that value is again the same. It's minus b by a that is minus coefficient of x square upon coefficient of x square then product of zeros
Rho number of zeros that means alpha into beta into gamma. That is as we discussed earlier. That is minus d. That is the constant term upon the coefficient of x cube. That is a. If you remember in the previous the quadratic equation it was c by. But here we'll obtain one more relation. That is called sum of the product of the zeros. Sum of the product of zeros. Sum of the product that means alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha. That the relation is the coefficient of x that is c and the coefficient of x cube that is a. So we should remember this three for the objective type of sums that won't come in the exam for two mark question. Thank you. Let's see the first question of exercise 2.2. It is said that we have to find out the zeros of the quadratic polynomial and we have to verify the relation between the zeros and the coefficient as we discussed earlier. So first of all it is very important to find out the zeros. Remember what method I am going to explain you. The same we are going to use in chapter number 4 that is the quadratic equation. To find out the zeros of quadratic equation polynomial here is very important. Remember how we do this. As it is a quadratic equation a polynomial. As it is a quadratic polynomial so it has three terms. It can be two but x square is always there. So let us understand how we will find out the zeros of this, which we have already discussed in the 8th standard. Let us do the same matter. So we know that we have to do the product of 8, that is a constant, and the coefficient of x square, that is 1. So we have to find out the factors of 8. So which are the possible factors of 8? 1 8 are and 2 4 Now what we have to obtain? Minus 2. How do we obtain minus 2? By doing the subtraction. See there are three things we should remember when we find out the zeros of this quadratic polynomial. To find out the zeros of the quadratic polynomial there are three things very important. Uh, we have to find out the factors of which number. Then what term we have to obtain. And the third how do we obtain. So the first we have to find the factors of A. We have to obtain minus 2 and by subtraction. So here you can see that the subtraction of 4 and 2. As we have to obtain minus 2. So we can see these are the correct factors. Minus 4. So the first term as it is. Minus 4x plus 2x minus 8. We take out common from first two and last two. The x is common. So x minus 4. Plus 2 is common, so it is x minus 4. As we discussed that this term must be equal, so one of the factor is x minus 4 and another is x plus 2. So we can say which are the two zeros? See, as we discussed, it's a linear polynomial. This is also a linear polynomial. So this value of x is 4 and this value of x is minus 2. So we can say there are two zeros. Alpha that is 4 and beta that is minus 4. So what are the relation between the zeros of the quadratic and coefficient? Yes. So for that let's first find out alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is minus 4 minus 2 so it is 2 and alpha into beta oh, which I forgot 4 into minus 2 it's fine. 4 goes a minus 2. Now let's come with the coefficient. This are then the sum of the zeros and the product. Now if I compare the given equation with the standard form ax square plus bx plus c. So what the value of a we have? Coefficient of x square 1. What value of b we have? That is the coefficient of x. It is minus 2. And what the value of c we have? It's a constant minus a. See students remember the coefficient when you are writing the sign is very important. If it is plus sign there is no need to write. But if it is minus sign it is very important to write. Now we have to show the relation. 
what we discussed if i do minus b by a here minus b by a which is equals to minus 2 so here you can say that here you can see that we'll obtain minus b by sorry minus b so it must be plus 2 fine because as b is negative become plus so minus b by a is equals to 2 which is equals to alpha plus beta and let's go for the c by a that is minus 8 upon 1 so it is minus 8 so this value is c by a so here we have obtained the relation that alpha plus beta is minus b by a and alpha beta is equals to c by a let's do one more sum to understand this quadratic equation sum polynomial sum thank you let's see one more sum with the same type we have to find the zeros and we have to verify the relation between the zeros and the coefficient for quadratic polynomial to find out the zeros of this quadratic polynomial first of all we have to arrange the terms so i have written x square x and constant now as it is 6 3 is 18 we have to find out the factors of 18 and we have to obtain 7 so the factors are 2 9 zero, and the factors minus 9 plus 2 so it is minus 7 so here we will write the factors that is 6x square minus 9x plus 2x minus 3 see this is called split I have done the split of the middle term the common from first to that is 3 so it remains 2x minus 3 and plus 1 so it is 2x minus 3 as 2x minus 3 is common from both so it is 2x minus 3 is 1 and another factor is 3x plus 1 so as both are the linear we obtain the value of x it is 3 by 2 and here it is minus 1 upon 3 so as we obtain the two zeros we used to call them alpha and beta alpha is 3 by 2 and beta is minus 1 by 3 so let's do the sum of the zeros and we'll show the relation the sum of the zeros that is alpha plus beta alpha is 3 by 2 and beta is minus 1 by 2 as they do not have the same denominator we have to take the LCM the LCM of 2 and 3 is 6 we should multiply with 3 and multiply with 2 to obtain 6 so by the same number we have to multiply in the numerator so we will obtain 7 upon 6 now look at the relation of the sum of the zeros with the coefficient so let me write the values of the coefficient the value of a that is 6 b is the coefficient of x that is minus 7 and c is the constant term that is minus 3 sum of the zeros as we know it's supposed to be minus b by if i do minus b by a so as minus minus become plus a is 6 so we can say that this value is nothing but it is equals to minus b by so here we obtain the relation that alpha plus beta is minus b by that is the sum of the zeros let us go for the product of the zeros that is alpha beta product is multiply 3 by 2 into minus 1 by 3 this would be cancelled so it is minus 1 by 2 let us do the same thing c by a c that is minus 3 and 6 3 ones are 3 twos are so it is minus 1 by so here we obtain that is equals to c by a look at one more questions to do the same thing but here the question is you can see there are two terms only but as it is a quadratic polynomial because the degree of polynomial is 2 now how to find the factors recall this it is like a square minus b square so the factors are a plus b a minus b but as it is not a perfect square so we can write it is a perfect square of root 50 for 15 we have written root 50 so one factor is t minus root 50 another is t plus root 50 so we obtain two zeros one is root 50 another is minus root 50 so here we have two zeros alpha and beta is root 50 and minus root 50 so now let's see the relation alpha is root 50 and beta is minus root 50 
Let's first do the sum of the zeros. When we do the sum of the zeros, you can see they both are irrational, like irrational, so it must be cancelled. So here it would be zero. Correct. Let's write the coefficient. The coefficient of x, x square, and since t square is a, as there is no middle term, so it is zero, and the constant term is minus fifty. You can say that if I do minus b by a, so that is minus zero upon one, so it is zero. So we obtain the relation alpha plus beta is same as minus b by a. We obtain the relation. Let's go for the product. That is alpha into beta. So root fifty into root minus root fifty. As the answer would be minus, but root root will become fifty. So here let's go for c by. C is minus fifteen and a is one. So this value is minus fifty. So we can say this value is c upon a. Thus we obtain the or verify the relation between the zeros and the coefficient.